<laughs> Welcome to the Quick Stop F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're hearing us. We appreciate that on this lovely special podcast. Why would I be with anyone other than my special and lovely co-host and co-founder? It's Tandy Sabanda. Tandy! Hi! <laughs> Hi. I feel like we've um we've recorded a lot this week. Are you tired? I you know what? I'm not tired. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Okay. We're here talking to the people and I get to see you more than once every fortnight. So for me, that is absolutely lovely. And I love that for you. Yeah, no, look, why look, I'm the lucky guy. Pleasure's all mine. Come um on. <laughs> but look, it's not about me, it's not about Tandy. Today we've got an incredible show lined up for you. Um it's really cool that we get to do these kinds of things. Who would have thought when we started this podcast two years ago that we'd be talking to a group of people who went so close uh, and went so far in trying to get a whole new team into F1. And the way they went about it was completely different to how May. anyone has ever tried to go about it. Right, Tandy? In a very interesting way as well. I was so excited yeah. to actually have this conversation so, do you want to introduce yeah, our guest? I will. You know, normally we're talking shit about people without them knowing. Now we get to you do it mean? to their now face. You know what I mean? Now we get to do it to their face. <laughs> do you know the beauty of that? Beautiful. It's incredible. We're moving up. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Paul, Andy and Benjamin from the Lucky Sons team. Cheering. Woo! All for you. Look at that. You know what? Nothing you guys can yet. even get... Yeah. We actually don't know these guys, so maybe we should have given them the clap, you know? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. So Tani's <laughs> saying that we should have given you the slow clap, which is... The slow oh. clap. When do we know who they are? We don't know no, them. No, no, no. No. bringing anyone into the yard. Oh, God. The two claps. So well, look, um, mm -hmm. let's do the introduction formally. So mm -hmm. I guess... Do you want to go around each other? If I went, like, first start with you, Paul, uh, and then Andy, and then Benjamin, I guess... Who the hell are you guys? Okay, Paul Fleming, uh, chairman of Lucky Sons. I've uh, been um, working on this for many years now. Um, and fundamentally, we're, we're here to bring a new F1 team to the grid. That's the plan. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what we're trying to do at the present moment time. Awesome. Andy. Andy. Yes, I am a co-founder, chief commercial officer, and I've been involved in this entire sort of Formula One project for four years now. And it's been it's been a real sort of roller coaster, right? As a, and and we've come to this this week that we're now in, and it's it's, it's gone from roller coaster to kicking the nuts. But um, <laughs> as 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 Steve Price, our chief creative officer, always says, um, we go big, we never go home. So. Uh, we ain't going anywhere yet. No, look, it sounds just like Tandy's friends whenever they come to my house. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and last but not least, Benjamin, how are you? Hi, I'm Benjamin. I'm the CEO of Lucky Sense, and I've been working a little bit more than and the important is that six years I'm trying to bring a new team to Formula One with the up and down COVID and whatever you can throw at us, but we're still here, still alive, and still going forward. I look, I love that for you guys in that it has been. I think for a lot of people, look, let's be honest, right? We look at the bids that came through, okay? Andretti, obviously, American heritage. You can't get more American than Andretti, potentially Cadillac and General Motors and everything. And that like American kind of, man and Ford. American man, do you know what I mean? Oh, like, they yeah, are, <laughs> they are literally everything that you can swim by America. You've got high tech and Carlin mm -hmm. with, with their youth experiences. And then, you know, some of the other bits, which are kind of, I guess, uh, some of them had faces that we would know or we would come across as, as motorsport fans. And then we had you guys, the guys who had minimal amounts of vowels in their name. Uh, and you're, you know, you guys, are, you're, you're popping up. And you say you want to run a Formula One team, but no one knows who you are. So what the hell or who the hell are Lucky Sons? And what is it about you guys that wanted to make you bring 
a, a racing team to the highest level of motorsport? Who wants to answer that one, guys? Um, Thanks, Benjamin. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? I've got to say, first of all, I really appreciate you pronouncing our fucking name correctly. <laughs> I was literally <laughs> going to say this. I was going to address this. I was going to address this because it looks like Licky Sons. It looks like L Y. I, I, I wasn't sure what it was at first. To be fair, if you hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known. <clears throat> I think I think look, I've got to I've got to confess and uh, I put my hands up. It's my fault. This one. Um, it was it was a long process of coming up this name, and it, and to be fair, it genuinely was right. But I think we 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 could have gone down that that traditional route of calling ourselves Duran Fleming Pyra Racing. Um, but it was kind of like, well, screw that, you know. We 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 we're nothing. We definitely don't want to be traditional because Formula One needs a kick up his ass. It needs a completely different tone. And we thought, you know what, the audiences that we want to bring into into Formula One, the ones that we're going to entice in where the entire sport is going to benefit from what we what we do as a team, you know, they they don't care about heritage, they don't care about tradition, they don't care about prestige. They they want something that essentially that I suppose they just can't fucking pronounce. And that's and that's how we landed on Lucky Sons. We just, I think it epitomizes everything that we do. We just do things differently. Is Lucky Sons short for Lucky Sons a BS? Whatever you want B- it to be. Bees? That's <laughs> Fair play. I'll take it. Is it you know, I'll take brand, it. Branding, branding isn't, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science. You know, a brand can stand for whatever you want it to be, to, to stand for and, and we just wanted to stand for something that is a little bit more appropriate for today's day and age and the generations that we want to entice into the sport. Um, you know, everybody, if you, if, you look at, if you look up and down the grid right now, everybody's name apart from Red Bull is essentially a, it's a surname or it's a car manufacturer. And Lucky Sons wants to stand right. out. And, and the first thing you're going to come across is a, is, is a team's name. So let's fucking stand out. And, that, and that's, that's why we've gone for a name that you say has only got one vowel in. It's quite difficult to pronounce, but when, once you've got it, you've got it, right? You mm. can pronounce it. So no, no great drama. We're all, we're all intelligent people in this world. Um, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to figure out what it actually, um, how you actually pronounce it. So, I think Benjamin mentioned it was, you know, this has been, this is not a flash in the pan. This is not, as I've seen quite a lot, um, an opportunistic kind of crash cash grab um which is hilarious because you know the way that formula one teams are absolutely bleeding money i don't know why anyone would think (laughs) that this is this is a cash grab but i guess with it being six years in the making what where where did this journey start and i guess how have you gone from that beginning point of six years ago of okay we want to bring a team into f1 when most likely it was probably a lot easier than it is now. And how have you kind of carried that on into today? Benjamin, over to you. And look, it happens to the best of us, but if you mm. are on mute, I did it three times <laughs> he did. In, our, in, our, in our podcast he last did. week. And <laughs> okay, and so I'm just here to say Sorry. that if if it is a mute issue, then I don't know. That it, is it, it went on mute point. by itself, and uh, it, it has its own life. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, 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 the, the project started six six years ago. Uh, basically, at the beginning, the project w- was meant to be a Chinese uh, Formula One team. Uh, when I stopped and, and sold my company, in, um, in I, I have, when, when you say that we are new, we are not new. Each of us, Andy or Paul or myself. We have long experience in our fields, uh, and also in Formula One and in motorsport. I'm, I'm in motorsport for, for 27 years. So I was, um, had my company, uh, in, in France and we were racing the SMP racing cars in uh, Le Mans and in GT and developing the BA engineering, uh, cars. And when I stopped, I part ways, I sold my company basically to them. Uh, we decided what is the next step. And at the time I was, uh, when I was developing the BR01, the, the LMP2 cars from the from the SMP racing, 
uh, we wanted to uh, uh, sell the cars and raise the car in Asia, and especially in China. And my contact over there always told me, if you want to do anything in China, if you want to do anything in Asia, you have to be in Asia. You cannot, you cannot create something from Europe and expect to be successful over there. Um, so yeah, the, the project started with the, the a Chinese a Chinese gold team um, that did not happen for many reasons. And then we, along the past, we had more and more interest from Southeast Asia, um, and then we shift to Southeast Asia and and developing this with the diversity side, etc. We came to, across people from Africa also say why you're not doing something also in Africa, and it, it's it's kind of evolution. Uh, we, we didn't really seek it at the beginning. It, it's, it's a natural evolution where if you start to, to have diversity, then you, you, cannot, you cannot, you know, forget about one of the main continents that is Africa. It, it, it came naturally through the, the contacts we had, through the development we were trying to do, the diversity we were trying to push through Asia. Then, then it, it was normal that we arrived to a point where Africa and Asia would be, would be mixed in, in what we are trying to do. Okay, no, and look, that is uh, really, uh, I'd, I'd say, ambitious, um, and it's really, I guess, it's really cool, right, that we have uh, a team that is essentially saying that, look, we want to, we want to base ourselves in uh, in Asia, and we want to run out of Asia, and I guess, you know, kind of staying true to that, you know, throughout the whole process. We did actually have a question from one of our uh, listeners who actually asked us, um, where do you, you plan to build the main factory slash factories, right? So, you know, with, with, you know, with all of these ambitions, right? And I guess we can get on to what some people might consider the soft factors of, you know, um, of diversity and, 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 you know, and the plans that you have outside of the car right but the most important thing is the car itself and and the base so i guess do you have a solid plan of where the car is going to be built who's going to build the car and and i and i guess from there you know uh, in terms of like a technical base for the team that can be to anyone uh, yeah, that can I'll, be to anyone by the way okay i'll i'll, I'll go for that um so we so what what we were doing was is that instead of sort of trying to stand in front of journalists throughout this entire entire period we we had feet on the ground um having major discussions with with people in and around southeast asia right where we wanted to base the team and sort of gauging their interest gauging how they could help lucky sons in their region or in their country sorry and we were getting a lot of good feedback from countries or government ministers across uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, um, Thailand, um, and and where where they sort of they've already got the facilities that for us to sort of attach ourselves onto. Obviously, there would be a requirement to to build um, certain facilities on top of those facilities as well. But those discussions were, and yeah, we had written confirmation from 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 various governments saying that we are dead keen on. Um, having lucky sons based out here, we've got a, we've got somewhere where we think the the team can be. And obviously, as a team, we identify places within those countries that we would like to be, because um, from a logistical point of view, you've got to make sure you've got, you know, it's got to be a hub, right, where you can, where you, where you can travel around the world as as part of the Formula One calendar. Um, and obviously, you know, we 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 had, we had um, we had agreements in place with with, with architects, with builders, and and, and 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 whatnot within those within that territory or within those continents. And um, you know, it wasn't a case of us sort of pinpointing one right now, because you know, a lot of the time, you, what you find is in these situations is is that people want to see that you've got the license, um, because we're yeah, because it's, it's a very it's a very complex matter. That um, to to set up a completely new Formula One team in a completely different country, whereby you know everybody sort of looks at it and thinks, well, that's an impossible challenge. Well, we didn't see it as impossible; we just seen that it had never been done before. And so it's quite a long process 
Um, but what I can say is, is that of those three countries that we that, that that I've mentioned previously, you know, we had government support, we had a motor motorsport association support, and we had we had educational support as well, right? That's correct, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the key things is for each of the countries when we've been speaking at governmental level, the appetite for us to come into those countries has been off the scale. Um, in fact, if anything, the three countries themselves are all competing against each other to try and get us into those countries. They are talking about um, providing land, tax benefits, educational benefits, putting kind of a real kind of educational infrastructure into each one of those countries. So it's not only providing kind of jobs for the drivers, it's actually entirely kind of um, new careers, kind of STEM education careers, where people can get involved in engineering, media, hospitality, anything to do with the wider F1 community, and all of which adds to the, the national um, uh, economy for each one of those specific countries. So, so they see the massive benefits. I think also when you kind of replicate that with regards to what we're planning on doing with the, uh, the academies that we're planning on setting up around the world, I think with us specifically pinpointing that, we feel as if Africa is also a, a growth place for all these uh, opportunities as well. So we've been talking to the kind of motorsports associations in the likes of Kenya, in Ghana, in Zimbabwe, places like that. So there's a real there's a real appetite. Um, but I think the key thing for me is this isn't about kind of um, uh, this perception that F1 can only be based in within 50 miles or so of Oxfordshire. I think that's absolutely wrong. Um, what we're finding is there's an awful lot of amazing talented people from all walks of life from around the world and if we look at the technical technological innovation that's actually happening out of asia and that being at the cutting edge of what's happening in not just in formula one but in business and in the industry as a whole we absolutely know that there is fantastic talent in asia southeast asia africa usa other parts of the world that i know that we can tap into that currently don't get the opportunity to do so. Well. After, after you, Tandy. Okay, so here's my question that has arisen while I've been listening to you guys. Um, okay, so I've essentially got three white men on my platform as a black woman alongside the lovely Nyasha. And um, you guys are talking to me about building in countries like Africa, um, countries of people of colour. And then I'm going on your website and I'm seeing a lot of hip hop culture, a lot of references to what is essentially black culture. Um, I wanted to know kind of where you guys were going with the hip hop culture stance and what it has to do with Formula One and where you guys have found a middle ground. Well, I think, you know, it's got nothing to do with Formula One right now. Mm. Um, that, that was kind of the whole point. You know, hip hop culture is, is the most influential culture in the world. Um, mm. and obviously we, we, we're lucky sons. We wanted to bring a completely different tone to Formula One. Um, the, the, the culture's a lot of things. It's not just a genre of music. It's, uh, it's an overall attitude. It's a sort of a, a fuck it mentality, a, a real and raw honesty, um, you know, that would, that would essentially raise the energy of the sport, you know, and it, I think it's fair to say that that paddock at the moment needs the energy raised because it's quite a bland paddock. You know, everybody looks the same. Everybody does the same stuff. Um, but mm -hmm. I guess most importantly, um, it leans right into Lucky Sons' overall mission, and that is to provide opportunities for people from underrepresented communities that don't don't even know about Formula One or don't or would would never in a million years e expect that an opportunity exists for them in you know the the elite level of, of motorsport. Because if we if we think if we look back where hip hop originally started in the States, in New York, and who, who was it created by? It was created by people that didn't didn't have an opportunity, didn't see an opportunity for themselves. So what did they do? They went and got creative and, and created their entire culture that just so happens, 50 years later, has turned into the most influential one in the entire world. Now tell me, you know, so you, your question of what does Formula One have to do with hip hop? You're right, man, mm. fuck all. <laughs> nothing, until lucky, nothing until Lucky Sons gets into Formula One. First, um... Quick stop F1 though. Oh, sir. Well, well yeah, <laughs> but, see, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll be there as well. So. We bought it first. <laughs> there, there will be. Yeah, yeah. We can't 
we can't just rely on Sir Lewis Hamilton to to to, to raise the energy and to to bring mm-hmm. a different vibe into the sport. You know, when when he disappears from the sport, you know, and I really don't hope it happens anytime soon, and I'm sure it won't do. But what happens to the sport? Everybody, everybody just sort of like does the same thing. They copy yeah. each other, um, and I'm not sure where that sort of differentiation sort of is. is where's that coming from? Um, and that's that's what we wanted to bring into Formula One, uh, just a, just a completely different energy, just to just to raise the bar a little bit, because it's all a little bit like Euro Pop at the moment, right? Tell me, tell yeah, me, you prefer a little bit of hip hop. I mean, to be fair, yeah, it's very Euro Pop. I mean, my next question was, have any of you guys been to school with Max Verstappen's dad? Like, because it seems that everybody went on holidays together. That Lewis and underprivileged drivers on the grid to name whoever it is other than Lewis um, wasn't invited to the polo club so I was just wondering if I essentially have people who went to the polo club listen to hip hop and then decided that you know we're now going to do this so that's that's I like I, your answer though I ain't, I ain't from no polo club I'm sure Paul <laughs> isn't and Benjamin isn't either yeah no <laughs> I think one of the things that really strikes me about kind of what's happening in F1 and uh, people are talking about us being disruptors I actually really think we are. But actually, if you think about the teams that have been successful in Formula One, I think one of the most disruptive and and one of the most influential F1 teams ever to come to, well, is Benetton. When they arrived, they completely changed the attitude of what was happening in F1. And then the other one is Red Bull. They changed the attitude of what was happening in in F1. But what I'm seeing at the moment is what's happened now is, 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 is I see Red Bull has just become corporate. That's not what we want yeah. to be. We don't want to, to to go back to kind of normality. We want something that we can actually really shake the trees and, and, and kind of make a difference with what's happening in F1. And and, and I think that's one of the key things that we want to get across. Well, Red Bull was one of the original challenger brands of Formula One, right? You can't be a challenger right. brand if you're winning every year. You know, at some point, you, at some point, your your you whole sort of your, your tone and your vibe is going to change. It's like up, you know, straight back now. You know, and um, and and in fairness, you know, Red Bull, they're still doing stuff they were doing ten years ago. They're doing it today, so um, you know they haven't sort of evolved. And it's going to it's going to need somebody to come in and really grab the grab it by the balls and 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 sort of just move things on further for the next team to come in in ten years, maybe, or the next the next brands are coming. And, and if I may, your question also show the work and the distance skills that have to be achieved. I mean. The fact that you question why three white men would, would be interested in diversity show that, yeah, that there, is, there is an issue here. It's, it should not be a question. It should be, yeah, it's normal. There's guys who want to do diversity wherever they come from. The fact you say, oh, it's two white guys, that why, why suddenly white, you know, white guys are interested in diversity? It, this should not be a question. It should be, yeah, we, diversity is coming. Where, where, wherever they want to push it under the rug or delay it, etc., it's... It, it will come. It, it's 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 inevitable. We're just trying to make it happening faster. Yeah, but, but, the, but the, the interesting feedback is when we go around the world and we're talking, and, and even from the feedback that we've been hearing, kind of over the past six months or so, the appetite around the world for people wanting to get behind a team that is not coming from Europe and not coming from the USA. There's an appetite around the world where you go and speak to people and they just go, this is what we need. This is the time when we need it. Let's get on and get it done. And and, and it's it's interesting because we feel as if we've had the conversations with the powers that be. And they're saying, yeah, we're hearing you. We can understand that this is what the wider kind of motorsports and F1 fans are wanting. But it's interesting that they haven't taken up the opportunity to actually grab a hold of a team that's prepared to, to do the hard yards and put the miles in to do what we need to do to establish a an F1 team in a part of the world that's never been expected to do it. The time now is actually really to do it. Okay, cool. So let's let's jump on that. So you guys have gone through um, the expression of interest process, right? Where, um, you know, you were invited by the FIA to, um, or as, as anyone, yeah, you were invited to the Polo Club to 
pay what uh, what I imagined was uh, uh, you know pretty large sum of money for the entrance fee just to just to have a little peek in behind and see oh you know this is what it's like uh, and they would uh, they'd allow you to come into the little back room where they've got the butler and you you know you get whatever oh, you want oh and they've got the small sandwiches and the so, yeah yeah you know, mimosas. little strawberries and cream we and didn't even mimosas. get sandwiches. We didn't, didn't even get sandwiches. We didn't even not get a even sandwich. a little. Not even they a didn't Costco even feed you, man. Sandwich. Rah! Where's all wow, the money so going? Wow, well, who knows? Well, definitely not in. Let's not get into that. So <laughs> we could, you know, uh, argue that. Look, the FIA, if we're to, if we're to take them at their word, went through a very stringent process. You guys were put up against everyone else, and. Unfortunately, you know, in their eyes, no matter everything that you're kind of saying now and all of the points that you're putting across and the things that you're saying were kind of found to be found short, I guess. I guess. But then were you kind of given any feedback as to, OK, you've not been accepted, but this is why we don't think we're going to take your bid forward? Yeah, Benjamin, I'll hand that over to you and then I'll happily take it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we, we have been given feedback. Uh, if, if you've seen what happened the past few weeks where everybody was saying, uh, okay, there is three teams that have been, before the FI announced, there's only 180, those three teams have received letters, etc. Et so they have, they have given us reasons. The, the reason they have given us, we have challenged because we disagree on their analysis uh, of, of, of our bid. We're still waiting for their reply today. Uh, they have not replied to our, uh, to our thing. So I will not comment on this because we are still on, on their NDA. But let's say that uh, we don't have the same definition of thorough and, uh, and, and, and process uh due diligence the, 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 the way they do and the way we did. Um, that said, if you forget about Andretti's name, if you forget about uh, his support from, from Cadillac, etc., if you took what Andretti is doing, what Andretti is doing is creating, from what I understood of his bid, uh, I read in the press because obviously I'm not privy to everything. Big. But if I understand well, he's going to create an entity in Europe while he's creating... A, a state of the art facility in US, and then he's going to move everything basically from Europe to US, train people in US for this, um, because obviously he's not going to move. He, he will have to hire people from F1, people with experience. I don't think he will take a lot of people from IndyCar or from Formula E uh, or whatever his other program to put them in F1. You need people with experience. And then he will train people in US to be at the level because there is engineer, there is everything. If you look at what we are doing, we are creating a state-of-the-art facility in Asia with something that is best for us in Europe for the initial years. And we're going to train people in Asia and Africa to be the, the, the backbone of the team while having some people of his experience coming to work with us. We are planning to recruit 400 people. But on one side, everybody says, oh, Andretti is doing in the U.S. There is no issue. There is, it's normal. It's good. And when we do it in Asia and Africa, people are saying, but why? Why? It's not possible to do that in Asia and Africa. I don't see why an American engineer is better than an, an Asian engineer or an African engineer. If you if you go out of the shell of the European and, 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 and U.S. You know, uh, uh, straight uh, line of sight, and you look what is going in Asia and Africa. Africa, uh, uh, you have many, many companies now that are going to Kenya, that are going to Ghana, because they have very, very high level skill engineers and, and skill and skill uh, uh, people. Uh, in Asia, you have the top universities that that are in Singapore. So the talents are there. It, it's just a, a very um, European vision, you know, old, old, old European vision. It's, from the colonies that those people cannot compete at the same level than an American team. We are doing exactly the same. We have the same money. We have one billion to invest in Formula One. We have 400 people we can recruit. We have one of the top 
a recruitment company in London that is called VHR. They have, they have provided more than 1,000 people in Formula One over the next, last 10 years. We have identified, ready to, to join us, two or three candidates per position for the senior management. Same thing for the junior management. By the end of the year, I can have 100 people working for me right now. And we, we know them. It's not, it's not that I will, I will go out and look for them and I, I'm wondering who I can hire. We can have that. The only thing is people saying, you can do it in US, but you cannot do it in Asia. And I still don't understand why. Well, I, I, need, I can pretty much understand need, why, to be honest, need, because it's... Do you need any so of that you. reiterating? Do you need any of that reiterating? Because obviously I think at the beginning it was, it was a little bit fuzzy. I think from my understanding is that you guys, you know, have, uh, you know, kind of laid the plans out for your recruitment strat strategy to be able to, you know, in a, in a mirror way to kind of Andretti kind of having their base in Europe first and then obviously taking that over to America um, and then hiring American and so forth, but still kind of hiring within F1. You're looking to, to do a bit more of a grassroots kind of program of whilst you do have people that you're ready to hire, especially into the senior management positions, you're looking to train and build up a team essentially from scratch from these areas. And, you know, something that Formula One has been, you know, kind of uh, trying to champion or in, and say, look, we want to get people into the sport from, from everywhere. If you look at Mission 44 and Lewis Hamilton's doing and trying to get into STEM at an early age and say, look, these are the opportunities available if you do these kinds of subjects, but you're obviously looking probably higher engineers all over the world. I think Ghana was mentioned as like having a top engineering kind of um, oh, pedigree cool. in terms of the students they they produce, which is awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, okay. So it sounds great on paper. People would still, and I feel bad because I feel like I'm being the mouthpiece for people who don't believe in you when I believe in it. And it all sounds incredible to me. The, I guess the overall sentiment and prevailing uh, kind of feeling is that, you know, in fact, I'll read, you might not know, you might not be aware, but we get quite a lot of people who seemingly don't like us. Really? People Twitter. don't like us? I don't know. What? I don't get it. They I don't, don't know like how they us? would. I don't That's know how they would. That's crazy. I didn't even realize are... people didn't like us. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And guys, please don't leave the call with that information, okay? Like, and I know I've just said something that is not good to hear. However, one person who is insistent on uh, saying something negative all the time is Jeff One at Jeff on F One. <laughs> Hi, I'm going to just read this. Hi, Jeff. You're famous Hi, again. Jeff. Um, Jeff says, and I guess this is, you know, this is, I guess encapsulates some of the things that we hear, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. To me, this Lucky Sun's bid is nothing but a pipe dream and unrealistic. It screams opportunists trying to jump on a bandwagon by using diversity as its sales strategy to drum up support. On the whole, and this is offensive, and I'm sorry this guy said this, <laughs> it gives me rich energy vibes. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? He's basically Shh. called you guys scammers. Anyway. Man, I've got no, I, I'm 45 and I cannot grow that beard. Okay, I've, got, <laughs> yeah, I've, no. I've got no facial hair. I do not have William Story's yeah. beard. It's impossible. I'm, look, I'm trying and I, I look like uh, someone who's not had a bath in a few days. And apologies. But I'm young as Jeff, ever. Yeah, you're young as ever and don't have a beard. So thanks for just sticking that in where it was completely <laughs> unnecessary. Um, Jeff, Jeff One, after all of that, asks, my question is, why am I wrong on this? And I guess, how do Jeff. you plan? Jeff, yeah, tell us how you Jeff really feel. Jeff is so long. <laughs> I don't know, Jeff, I mean, he's just trawling the internet looking for people to, to say nasty things to. But I guess you... How would you turn that around? I guess sporting wise, do you have ambitions to one day win world championships? Are you here for the ride? Are you here to just, like you said, is this just your USP that you're, you're going to develop? And I guess that's how some people view diversity from listening to what you guys are saying. This is a ground up operation, which is going to spread the sport into markets that 
Look, they're saying it's good for America. They want to get into America. America already is starting to feel like it's starting to feel saturated with the races and, you know, and the declining mm. popularity of the sport due to whatever's going on right now, you know, with the Sappen and the domination, whatever. So I guess for you guys, how do you, how, what was your pr- plan for proving people wrong and showing that you are a real sporting entity with sporting pedigree that has ambitions to, to be at the top of, of the sporting pyramid in motorsport? Well, I think, I think the first thing, there's a few, there's, well, there's a few things to, to answer back to, to our mate Jeff, right? Who's, um, I bet he's white. Um, <laughs> he's probably US based. Um, and I reckon okay. I'm going to, has, has he got numbers after his handle? Has, he just, he has the account know. just been set up? He, no? no, no, to be fair, let's have a look. Uh, August 2023, it is new. It is new, <laughs> but he's been a fan of F one for twenty five yeah. years. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so yeah. there you go. Yeah, but no, um, uh, I guess how would you answer Jeff or, or anyone else who's feeling like that? Do you know, what? I'll, I'll jump in, and I think I'll pass on to Paul and Benjamin. I think, I think what people need to understand is is that yeah, we haven't just entered Formula, we haven't just come around and just suddenly decided that we're going to set up a Formula One team, right? I, Benjamin spent six years on this project. I've spent four years in this project. Paul spent the same amount of time as well. And 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 Benjamin, I think, has probably got about 25, 26 years experience in motorsport. Benjamin has set up new 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 motorsport teams from scratch in territories that don't have a history of, of, of any kind of motorsport. And he's won with those teams. Um, if we want to talk about sort of how Andretti is a serious operator, well, a little known fact is is that Benjamin's probably won more championships, homologated more cars with the FIA, um, actually built cars rather than buying cars in than Andretti. Then probably Benjamin, you will have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but probably any of the applications, you've been more successful from a sort of a, a, motor, yes. a motorsport standpoint. And the fun fact, the, the Rondon car that they are they are using in in New Zealand. Uh, it's the T125. Is the car I developed for Lotus with uh, Paolo Catone. Uh, we built the car in six months, uh, designed and built the car in six months, and it's a single seater car that has performance of a GP2 car. So, but and at the end, I'm not going to be the one who's designing the Formula One car. Uh, it's going to be like Andretti, like everybody else. I will hire people that know better and are better than me. What is shocking in in in, in this kind of of uh, question that we have? is that each time it seems that diversity is something bad, is something, or we, we're making an effort, you know, we're, we're, we are giving some opportunities to people that cannot. James Wall uh, said uh, a few weeks ago that uh, Formula One always recruits from the same, same pool, you know, it's the same people. You have tremendous talents in those countries. This is, the, I'm not making any, uh, any gift to anybody. I'm very selfish when I'm doing that because I will get those talents. When I train those talents, they will work for me and I will have a better team because I have those talents in my team. It's very, very selfish. It's not It's not like, okay, I'm doing this for the glory of it. It's, it's selfish because I will have one of the best team with, because I will have one of the best talents. You know, uh, small anecdote again. Uh, I was talking to a, a journalist uh, a few days ago, and he told me he was having dinner with one of the team principal. About, and they were talking off record with journalists about diversity. And the guy was telling them, we are completely open to diversity. We want more diversity in Formula One. But I cannot recruit in Oxfordshire you know, people from diversity. Yes, if you look in Oxfordshire, I'm sure there is diversity in Oxfordshire, but the percentage of those people that can work in Formula One in Oxfordshire is limited. You have to expand. If you want diversity, you cannot limit yourself to Oxfordshire. You have to go outside. And where is outside? It's it's Asia. It's Africa. You not you need to go convince those people to work for me. I want the the next, you know, uh, talent. Africa is very young also, so it's 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 a, it's a continent where you have a, a potential that is tremendous. Uh, but I want the next Neil deGrasse Tyson, not to go to build rockets or to be an astrophysicist. I want him to come and build the next Formula One car and be the next Adrian Newey. This is what I want. But right now, even in 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 in, in, in US with the Afro American College and everything, they don't look. Those communities don't look to Formula One. I mean, because Formula One don't look uh, uh, to them. They were in Miami in the hood. What have they done for the hood in Miami? Nothing. 
they went, they did the race, and they, and went back. And the people in the hood they didn't care about what was happening in the in, in the, the restaurant at the, at the, at the circuit. The, the, you need to entice those people. When I was young, I was looking Formula One. I was looking cross on the, on, on the track, but I was looking the engineers, and I said, I want to do that. I want to be one of those guys. A guy from Kenya, a guy from Malaysia, look at the, 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 the Formula One and say, oh, it's fun, okay, they are fight on the, on the track, there's Lewis, etc." But he doesn't say, I want to be one of those engineers, because he said, there is no way I'm going to have a job like this. No, and but, I think it's... it's uh, sorry, Paul, did you want to add yeah, any, anything I mean, on there? I think the thing that I want to add to it is this misperception that we're going to come into the sport and, and, and want to kind of ruin it is fundamentally wrong. Um, when people look at what can actually happen with having a, an F1 team based outside of Europe, based outside of the US, and we bring it to Asia, Asia's got 80% of the world's population. Asia and Africa together is 80% of the world population. We're completely missing them out. When it comes to yeah. actually talent and experience and actually bringing the best of the best, why do why does the organization F1 have this perception that it can the only talent can come from Europe? So if we can get the best of the best from around the world, that's what we want as, as, as lucky sons. But when it also comes to kind of the best of the best, the people who've got behind us and the, the funding that's got behind us has got to up to from the last conversation we've had, is about a billion and a half dollars to support us. Now, these are from institutions, from FAA, from US-based sports funds, from European-based institutions that aren't fly-by-night businesses. These are long-standing, 100-year-old businesses that have gone, actually, we like what you're doing, you're doing it well, and you're nailing what the opportunity is here at the precise moment in time. Using that funds, nobody's ever come into F1 with the money that we've got, and we can do it right. We can absolutely pull the best of the best people together in a sport that we absolutely passionately love, bringing the best people in sustainability, coming from diversity, equality, inclusion, you name it. We want to be seen as the best of the best, but we also want to be seen to be, are we going to come into F1 and win it season one? Hell no. We know that. But are we going to give it a damn good shot in the next few years? Hell yes. That's exactly what we want to be doing. That's how we want to go about doing it. And we've got enough people behind us, not just within our team, but it's been really interesting this past few days when people have started to hear the announcement and they've gone, what the hell is going on here? You, there is absolutely the right time, the right opportunity, and the time is now they are missing a huge trick by doing it the way that they've done it. So that's where I'm coming from. Yes, I want us to be the best of the best. We're, we've put a billion and a half together. Nobody's ever done that. But the reason why we've got that money together is because people genuinely believe that this is the right type of opportunity to invest in, not just for today, but for next today, tomorrow, next generations. That's where we're coming from. That's where we, why we've done it the way that we've done it. I think when yeah. when we talk about I think when we talk about diversity, I think people some people are very quick to to sort of turn it into a political thing. And I think when you get political, it's very dangerous, especially when you're talking about sport. I think you know from my from my side of the business, from my side of things, it's you know it's massively needed. Diversity is massively needed because how long? It's a, it's a it's a diversity of thought thing. Yeah, how long? Did we have to put up with the, the Alonzo and Taylor Swift thing? How long do we have to suffer? Do we have to suffer teams doing pizza making competitions, you know, just before the Monza Grand Prix? How often do we have to talk about ninjas and sumo wrestling when, when it's the Japanese Grand Prix weekend? Diversity of thought. You, you basically get the same when you hire the same people from the same system. All right. So tell me, as a, as a sports fan, do you not just want to be entertained by different people? Does Benjamin not want to have technicians coming in with different ideas? than the same people that, have, that are based yeah. in Oxford, that look the same, they do the same, they've been to the same university. Well, we want to go out, it's a big wide world, we want to get different ideas. I want to make some shit-hot content. I mean, you guys, you, you're leading the pack, right? Why are you leading the pack? Because you look at things in a completely different way um, than, 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 <laughs> than, 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 than those other podcasters out there at the moment. <laughs> 
<laughs> no fucking about. It. <laughs> if I'm not going to do it then, when am I, I going to let it go? I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> to add to but, that, but tell me, but the, tell me, I'm not, but tell me, I'm not spitting straight up facts. You know, diverse yeah, people bring diverse things and just makes everything a lot more fun yeah. and a lot more interesting, and, and it just moves things forward. Come on, guys, just just move this fucking sport forward, yeah. Jesus. And, and we are not stupid. We we are not saying okay, we're going to best the team tomorrow in Asia, recruit people from over there, and 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 do a Formula One team from from those people. No, we want to be successful, so we know we're going to train. We're going to take time to do it. Again, Andretti is doing exactly the bloody same thing in the U.S. and nobody questioning it. He's doing exactly the same thing. But because it's in the U.S. with U.S. engineers and U.S. think they say, okay, it's, it's achievable. And again, the, all those questions, all those uh, comments that we have received, negative or, or questionable people don't understand what we are doing. They are all coming from Europe and U.S. All the comments I have seen, in, in, in Asia and Africa, uh, um, they didn't ask, do they have money? Where is money coming from? What is this name? I cannot pronounce their name. No, they said they were all excited. They said, oh, so, yeah, they are coming. They are, they are, they, 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 there is something happening in, 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 our, in, in our region with our communities. This is what excited them. After all, we have to deliver. And this is what we have done also the past few months. Is being on the, we, we are not in the paddock in front of the camera kissing asses to everybody and saying, oh, we're coming. And, you know, no, we were on the ground with, the, with, the, with those communities to tell them, we're not using your, your community as a gimmick to get the entry. We, this is what we want to do, and this is how we want to do it. And this is why they give us their support, and they are behind us right now. Just to close off, John, on F1, his question in Jeff. terms of being Jeff. 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 Sorry, Jeff. sorry, Jeff. Uh, Let's not this. Sorry, mate. I got your I got your name wrong. Sorry, mate. This time, <laughs> um, just to you know, if we're talking about scams, I think the only people that have been scammed here is probably ourselves. We probably scammed ourselves thinking that the the, the, the sport was ready for change, and it's clearly not. Damn. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> That's it then. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the winner away from me. Yeah. There you go. I think I think that'll be easy though. <laughs> yeah. Just okay, so back up. I, 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 I guess. I so Sorry, go on, Paul. No, I, I think one of the things that I keep on coming back to is genuinely. People talk about Formula One and going to America. That's fantastic. And and I spent a lot of time over there. Brilliant. Absolutely the right thing to do. But I think we can grow the pot bigger, a hell of a lot bigger, by taking the sport into new parts of the world where there are sponsors who want to get into F1. They, and it's not just us as lucky sons building the pie. And it's basically every F1 team builds the pie. That's what we're bringing to the sport. It's not us detracting from it, and we're not reducing the we're not reducing the the um, uh, Concord Agreement, and we've got to give them a certain amount of money. That's fine. If anything, what we're trying to do is actually make the pie bigger for everybody, and that's one of the key things I think is coming across. And I think one of the key things that's also come across is when we look at the um, the sponsors and the people globally who've got behind us who've gone, actually, what you guys is doing, are doing as Lucky Sons, we love it. And, and the conversations that we've had behind the scenes of global firms, global companies who've gone, we love what you're doing. People who've never historically had any engagement with F1 ever, they've gone, can we have a conversation? And, and that's, again, an opportunity that I think that the – the authorities have, have decided to miss a trick with because these are some brands who've never come anywhere near F1, but they've seen what we are doing as lucky sons and absolutely come behind us. And, and the worst thing was that, that stuff that Paul's just spoken about, that was submitted as part of our bid. Names, you know, names were mentioned. Okay, so this is not things that we're making up. And I think you know, I think I think the FIA of or the sport as a whole has probably fumbled has, has done a major fumble here by by not given us the opportunity to do what we were going to do because if I was you know, if I was a race promoter in if I was a race promoter in China if I was a race promoter in Singapore or Japan or whatever 
I'd be looking at this thing. I'd be looking at this and thinking, yeah, what what are, what are they doing to help us sort of grow the sport over here to to justify the the the, the money that we're that we're having to spend on a three day event? You know, whilst they after three days they disappear onto the next one to to go and, to go and get their to go and get their hosting fees. You know, we we were able to. Or Lucky Sons was going to be basically creating a team that Asia and Africa could identify with. You know, the team that they could cheer on and think, you know, and they're cheering it on because, you know what, we've helped build that team. And I think this 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 is something that that I picked up on what you were saying in the um, in the podcast uh, yesterday, Tandy, is, is that you wanted a team that you could identify with. Yeah, we seem to be we seem to be missing a couple of continents. You know, uh, we, we're leaving people out. They they don't necessarily have. They have a Lewis Hamilton to cheer on. But and they they might have a zoo to cheer on as well. But what about an entire team where they can think, no, we actually we actually pieced together that car. That car's racing because of of our skills in Africa, because of our skills in Asia. And I think, you know, they've they've really fumbled a, a, a massive opportunity for the growth of the sport. Look, I I you know I'm gonna give you guys a round of applause. I, I I'm brought in. <laughs> Let me know. If, if I was the FIA, I would have signed on a dotted line and got you guys in. Tandy, was there something that you wanted to ask? Sorry, earlier. Yes. Well, she is so, so, <laughs> she can't even figure out what she wants to say. That's absolutely fine. So I guess what I will ask is, um, you guys, you say, look, we had a billion and a half ready to go, Right. You have all of these things kind of set up and so forth. However, they have said no. Um, what uh, one of the questions that we got asked uh, by um, by Ryan Marsh, uh, who said, uh, I, uh, "Who's at Darth underscore Ryan eighty seven? They ask, guess the obvious question is, what now slash next? Benjamin, do you want to pick that up? Yeah. Uh, uh, right. We have a problem. We have a lot of cash in our pockets. And, and, and it's burning our pockets. And we want to know, to, to be serious, we, we're we going to continue. The, the, again, the, the what we're trying to do in Asia, what we're trying to do in Africa, is not a gimmick just to get the F1 entry. It was part of the project. The, the F1 is the spirit of, of the whole project. With the academy, with, with, with the development uh, of young talents, bringing them to the motorsport and to the higher level. F1 is not close. First of all, the 12th team is still not there. It's not because something is, is not true today that it will not be true in the future. When I started the, the, this journey for creating a new Formula One team, we had a very, very uh, open and comprehensive administration, both on F1 side and FIA side. Things have changed, people have gone, and new administration came. Uh, a lot of things have changed in, in F1, F1 also. So, but it doesn't mean that after they realize that the American market is 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 not is almost saturated. Is is done. Is 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 there, but it, it will not expand anymore, or at least not as much. They will turn back and say, okay, now we need to go to Asia. Now we need to go to Africa. Dominica is working very very hard to have the first race in Kenya. You know, the, uh, after South Africa, the first African race next one will probably be Kenya. So they have an appetite for Africa. They have an appetite for Asia. So I'm sure. At one point, we will be able to to uh, reapply or, or work with them again to, to, to have this. We're not going to give up now and say, okay, let's get, let's come back in, in, in X years to, to try again. We have, as Paul said, people are communicating with us all the time. We have, we have been, even those past week when the, the announcement was almost done that we were not going to a Formula One, there was a chance that we don't get the entry. Still, government in Africa continue to contact us. Actors in, in, in Asia continue to contact us to say, guys, don't give up, don't stop. We're, we're, you're, you're on the right track, you have the right idea, do it somewhere else. So we, we're going to reverse engineering it. Instead of starting from Formula One and trickle down, 
we're going to go down and, and, and going up. But Formula One is still, is still obviously on the, on, on the radar. Uh, it's just that we need to have, again, the, the, the better circumstances and, and, and some uh, uh, power that be that realize that they cannot continue to go like this without diversity. They cannot continue to go like this without the market, etc. And when they will realize, we will be there because we will be already on the ground. Again, our job is not in the paddock. Our job is on the ground with all those communities. It, it's interesting, it's even, even, even today, um, and even Andy and Benjamin don't know this because it literally happened 10 minutes before I came on, Ooh. We have a group no. of um, Indian um, sports stars who've been in touch with us who said, how much do you guys need and how can we get involved in this? So so again, and this is after we've had the bid and they know that we haven't actually got ourselves in there. And they've said, we believe in you sufficiently enough that we want to get behind what you're doing and how you're doing it, even if you haven't got it. So wherever, whatever's going to happen in the near future and how things are going to change there are people around the world who are saying, okay, we believe this, we're going to get this behind this and back it. And and, and, and I, this is definitely, this might be round one, but we're definitely gearing up for round two. Paul, no. Paul I've got a question for Paul. Yeah, Paul, what, 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 are you, what, what are you doing on this podcast, man? Just get on the, get on the phone to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've already done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're probably... You know, I've got, Probably seen who you're on a podcast with and withdrawn that money like ASAP. Stop it. Stop it. He's, he's but, joking, everyone. I've got but a question. Again, it, the thing I guess me is it, this isn't always just about the money. The money is a big burning factor about this. But actually, you know what it is? It's the appetite of the people around the world who've gone, actually, we believe in what you guys are doing. Let's get behind you. And whatever it takes for it to happen, we're going to do it. And that's the message yeah. that keeps on coming every single day. This, those are the messages that I'm starting to get from the community. And it's also been really interesting. I've had people who work currently in F1 get in touch with me to say, this is really interesting what you guys are doing. Currently who are senior people within F1 who've gone, this is different. How you're doing it and where you're positioning it and what you're trying to bring to F1 is fundamentally different. And it is what we need. And these are people who our senior, senior people in, in our, in, frankly, in our competition will have already been in touch to say what you guys are doing is absolutely the right thing to be doing. Can I can I throw a question to you two? Go wow, on. Wow, you've asked two questions in a row and that, that is actually my job. But yeah, no, carry on. Go, go for it. From from somebody sort of on the outside looking into the whole sort of the, the, the bid situation and the application process... What did, what do you think of the the, the, the last eight months? You know, um, because I'm, I, I see a lot of a lot of comments and a lot of articles at the moment pointing towards wanting wanting a bit more transparency for the public. Um, and I know there's a you know there's a little bit of back and forth about the FIA and transparency in, in decision making, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, it's quite topical in terms of what goes on during a Grand Prix weekend. But in terms of the bid process, what do you two guys think? I definitely think it would have been fun to have known a bit more about the teams coming into Formula One. Maybe a little segment on F1 TV would have been nice. Do you know what I mean? Um, instead of just kind of hearing rumours and finding articles and having to go out and like search it yourself, that would have been nice. I mean, I feel like if more people knew about you guys, there would be a thousand times more support in comparison to the support that you're only getting now because people only know now that you're part of this bid. Um, which is sad, you know, come see, come sir. Um, but yeah, I wish we'd have known more about a lot of the teams. I wish there was less. I feel like the rollout to a lot of these teams were just rigged in like rumours and that is just Formula One. It's very like, it's very for them and not so much for us. So we've kind of accepted that anyway. I don't know. What, Nyasha, what do you think? Well, incredible French there. I, I like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if it was appropriate, but hey, that's okay. So um, I think like for me, <laughs> for me, I, I, I'll be really honest. 
what what it really felt like, I don't mean to get quite political, but how we how we get fed news about politics these days is they will brief the media, they'll let the the public know, and then there'll be a general reaction to that from the public, and then we'll hear something official. I have I have lost count of how many media briefings, press releases I've read only about Andretti. Like that was all, it was basically a drip feed of Andretti are going to be going, Andretti have got this, Andretti have done that. And it was, it was always kind of skewed towards Andretti being the, you know, the favourites and, and whatever. They, you know, again, like I said, without knowing the details of everyone's bid, on the face of it, it looks like that. But like I said, yeah, and like Tandy said really well, it would have been really cool for, of course, it's not up to the fans. It's not up to us to decide and these are people's livelihoods we were talking about. Williams can't even afford to update their factory. So, you know, why would it be up to us to decide if, if another one or two teams come into the sport, dilute their money even further, maybe even go above them in the standings and take over any potential prize money they may have? It's not up to us. But it would have been nice to have had to, for it to have been inclusive for there to be information for, you know, for each race weekend, if one of the teams could have had like a little section, interviews in mind bundle, Will Buxton, whoever, right? Just to have that kind of, what, instead of us having to go out and look for this and look, the, the, the engaged fan will most definitely read up about it because it's interesting and so forth. But, yeah. you know, I, I think a, I think about the time when you guys dropped the, the press release and it was really cool to see the timeline kind of talking about another team and saying, oh my God, these guys have got money. Oh, look what these guys are doing. And I just mm. feel if that was, if that if there was more than that, then that would have been, that would have been good, I think for, for me. But in terms of the process, yeah, it was, you know, I like a lot of things in F1. It's done in darkened corridors, which none of us have access to. And then we're kind of told, what it is, look at the stewarding decisions, look at new regulations, look at whatever. And it's Everything's so kind sad of done with and Formula then One because they literally soft launch corruption every single time. It's like they soft launch the L that they're about to give you. You know, they're like soft launching aliens right now. You know how they're like soft launching the concept of aliens? They've been soft launching the concept of Andretti for time. Why are we here? Why are we having this conversation? Yeah. They played you guys. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. we're, we're, an hour, we're an hour into the we're an hour into this recording, and that's the first tandyism that we've had. Shit. She's R- trying to be professional, relating the application to, to the alien I didn't invasion. Want to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? She said that you lot are that little fake alien they brought out in Mexico <laughs> with the Make play-doh. Up. Trust me. <laughs> That Play-Doh alien. Look. Oh, wow. Look, um, guys. I, I think one of the um, things, just, just just to add to that, though, I think one of the things that we actually really did about our bid was we didn't go into the paddock. We didn't have our photograph taken with X, Y, or Z. We actually went out to the grassroots of real motorsport associations, real governments, real fans around the world, and got them engaged, got them fired up, got them saying, yeah, actually, we want to support you. And and the dossier that we gave them of support to the FIA to say, actually, this is around the world grassroots support that we are doing. We're not there to get photographs taken with whoever and being part of the already existing club. We absolutely did this from grassroots right. And we didn't spend our time doing it the way that everybody else has done it because we think this is more... Formula One should look like in the future and how it should be going forward in the future. That's where we've come from. That's what we've done. And, and, and again, that might be a massive mistake on our part. But I'll tell you something, if we had the chance of doing it again, Paul, I'd I really well do it again because this is the right just... way to do it. Oh, oh, sorry, you're back. You cut off slightly there. We can hear it, but it will be in the podcast. And I know that it was some very profound shit. Uh, but okay. I, I, I'm sure of it. We only didn't catch the last of it, but no, it's really cool that you had that grassroots support. And yeah. again, you look, who knows? Maybe further down the line, we'll, like I said, you guys will have that opportunity to kind of present yourselves again. And I'm sure it's going to be super exciting to mm-hmm. see what you guys do in the future. I guess to finish off, I guess, what are your closing statements? If you guys had to give closing statements of, you know, who you are, why you should be in F1 or why people should consider you seriously or just, you know, just just if you want to, ch- you know, chat your shit for, for a minute, 
what is what would be like your closing statements to people listening to this who you know have maybe had their hearts won over by you or are still uh, unconvinced? It's not words. It's it's not words. I'm not going to say anything that is words. I'm going to show. You know, I'm just asking people sit down, watch, and, and let us show you what we're going to do and show you how we're going to go. I'm not going to promise we're going to do this and that. We're going to deliver. We're going to show it. This is how we do it. We're not bullshitting about, oh, yeah, we're going to be this, we're going to be that. No. Let, let, let's see us again in six months and see where we are and what we have done. This, this, is, what, this is our statement. We do. We don't, we don't talk. We, don't, we do. We will be on the ground doing it. Numbers that. don't lie. I Check the scoreboard. That. <clears throat> Do you know what Jay Z? Jay Z. Jay Z once said a few years back when he was doing that deal with the NFL. He said it's it's time to stop talking and time to start doing. And I think that is the <laughs> a very <laughs> controversial <laughs> deal. <laughs> yeah, controversial. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there is an <laughs> argument to say I'm not really sure what he's actually done with that. But yeah, but the sentiments are right. Yeah. It's time to stop talking and start and start showing now. And, and, and that's exactly what Lucky Sun's wanted to do. And, and I and honestly, I, I genuinely hope that we get the opportunity because for us to be able to give people the opportunity, we need the opportunity first. And, and by the looks of it, nothing's going to change unless Lucky Sun's is on the grid because um, which is a real which is a real shame. Right? At, at the moment, you know, it's, it's all it's all on. It's all on Sir Lewis's shoulders, and um, we wanted to change that. And I hope we do get the opportunity to do that in the future. I think the one, the one thing I would say is I get America. We see where it is. We can see the new races that are coming to America, but that's going to plateau out. We're already seeing that happen. Um, we do believe that there's 80% of the world's population that want to get behind F1. There's a massive opportunity there for them to get behind it. Let's get it done. And, and lucky sons, we're never going to give up, give up on this because we believe in it too much. We've put too much in, into it for, from our own personal perspectives. We've put in too much of this. We absolutely love this sport. We're passionate about it. We're going to make it happen. And we're going to bring F1 to Asia, Africa, and the rest of the world. There you go. Well, look, guys, this has been uh, an incredible conversation and I hope the people at home uh, have enjoyed it as well. And I hope people maybe who haven't listened to this podcast before, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoyed the sound effects. I'm going to give you guys a lovely round of applause. Thank you so much, Paul, Andy, Benjamin. Um, there you go, that's enough. And you know what? You guys can have a little gunshot as well. There you go. And that's that's like a gunshot into the air in appreciation. Yeah, yeah. I'm not because shooting. we might have new audiences who are you. like, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, I've got, wanna, I've got, yeah. don't want to scare I, I people. Hand, I don't want to go to the bathroom. Although, although you know, I've been sitting here yeah. for an hour and twenty minutes, desperate for the week. But um, how, what's the what's the story with your live event? Have you sold out yet? In uh, in Austin, we have not sold out. We have not. I'm going to get to that after this. Uh, but no, we look, we're at uh, 30% off selling out. We've got a live show in Austin, Texas, after the US Grand Prix. Guys, if you're going to the race and you want to see this in person, you want to see us in person, uh, and you just want to hang out with loads of other F1 people, come to our live show. We're doing it in an art gallery, Rich's Art, the only black-owned art gallery in Austin, we're Ooh. gonna have live music from a DJ. We've got merch for sale, and all your drinks are free. They're on us. We're paying for them. So don't worry about the expensive ticket that you've got, the expensive hotel you've bought, all the expensive stuff you're gonna buy at Koa. Oh my god, my eyes are burning thinking about paying for this. But we're all gonna celebrate because we're gonna have free drinks, music, and a live podcast after mm -hmm. the Austin. Circuit of the Americas, US Grand Prix. So if you're in Austin, come down after. We would love to see you. And yeah, thank you, Andy, for, for teeing that up. Um, My pleasure, man. I've been to one of those do events. Do you guys They're have awesome. a website that people can... 
They are really good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and they're much better than the one that you came to. That one was like our first one. We've improved since then. It was your second. It was your second. Standards have gone up. It was the second. Oh, definitely, definitely better than the <laughs> second one. Um, so, um, guys, do you have a website that people can find you on and find information? Fuck websites. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck websites. No, no it's, 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 it's like Lucky Sun. LuckySons.com, um, Lucky Sons, at Lucky Sons on everything, basically. And it's no, www.lkysunz.com. Yes, yes, guys, remember that. It's, it's Lucky Sons. Remember that, we'll put it up. Lucky Sons, but hey, we'll put it up, we'll put it in there. Guys, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate that. Hope you guys are watching at home. I haven't even asked you guys to like and subscribe. So if you've come this far, you better do it because what the hell are you here for otherwise? And remember, no matter what life throws at you guys, keep it on the black stuff. There it is. Take care. Good night. God bless. Little Pip. Bang. Look, mate, if you've got this far, clearly you like what we do. So here's a link to subscribe to the Quicks Up F1 family. Give that a click. And here's another link to some more cool <laughs> on our channel. Sorry, cool, cool stuff, stuff, stuff. And remember, no matter what happens, keep it on the black stuff. Click the stuff. Click the, click the links. Click the, the link, the links. Click the links there. There, there.